Welcome back, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining me here today. My name is Pratesh with Kaizen Crypto. In this video, it's going to be an update on some of the recent developments that we've seen take place within the Cardano ecosystem. We saw an article posted by IOG talking about the new education mission taking place in Ghana. So they're going to be onboarding even more people to blockchain technology by going there and educating them with a new Haskell course. So we're going to take a look at that, give you guys a bit more details in regards to that update, as well as Sunday Swap coming out with this really informative article talking about their scooper model. So this was an idea or a concept that was proposed in regards to the concern of concurrency that was being brought up regarding some of these DeFi indexes that are going to be building on Cardano. So we're going to take a look at that, give you all some of the scoop of what exactly is involved with this scooper model. And then we're also going to be taking a look at an update from IOG about the Plutus application backend. So it's saying here they've just released the beta version of the PAB and they're encouraging their developer community to try it out on the Cardano testnet. So the Plutus application is going to be something for the DeFi indexes, some of the applications that are going to be building on Cardano. And we'll take a look at that in this video as well. Before we get things started, wanted to say a quick happy birthday to the man himself. Charles Hoskinson is in Egypt as part of his Africa tour. Really cool to see him enjoying himself and uh, having a great time in Egypt. We've got some pictures of the Great Pyramid. This is the Sphinx. Uh, really cool to see all these pictures. I'm glad to see he's having a great time. It's interesting also to see that he was born on the 5th of November. Uh, so Guy Fox Day, if you've ever seen the movie V for Vendetta, uh, remember, remember the 5th of November. So it's a British observance holiday commemorating the failure of the gunpowder plot in 1605. So basically Catholic control within the church and state in England during that time. Um, it's a day to remember that. So pretty cool. I just think it's fun to pick up on these small things, but uh, happy birthday to Charles Hoskinson. Quick shout out to Alessandro from Barry Stake Pool. So he's been putting in a lot of work recently. And for anybody who uses the NAMI wallet, this is a great update that we've seen. So 2.2.0 has come out. So hardware wallet support for NAMI. Uh, it's incredible to see this because NAMI is actually a web browser extension. Now, one of the benefits of having a hardware wallet paired with this is that you get that extra level of security. And if we think about any type of vulnerabilities, such as things like malware, this could all impact the security of using a web wallet like this. But with hardware wallet support now for the NAMI wallet, uh, incredible update, and I think it's really gonna improve the overall security of the user experience. So great job to Alessandro. Thanks so much for all the hard work you do for the community. Also, if you are a legacy pass holder, nice to see these CNFTCon NFTs showing up in wallets. A uh, big shout out to everybody who participated in the CNFTCon 2021. It was a great experience. I was really fortunate enough to be part of that and uh, just get a chance to speak with some of the great creative artists that we have here in the community. Um, just incredible artwork too to see these airdrops. So big thank you to people like Buffy Bot, uh, Adam Dean, uh, Tyler with Spaces, Alyssa and Trevor Never Engine. You know, a lot of these people who've helped to put all this stuff together. It's just great to see this. Um, so a big shout out and thank you so much for that as well. So to get into the updates for this video, to start things off, empowering a new generation of innovators in Ghana. So we've seen that IOG has been playing a big role in helping to onboard countries in Africa with blockchain technology. And one of the initiatives that they've taken on is not only helping to create the tools, but also to help give them the education necessary to use these tools. Uh, and we're seeing that here with this new education initiative in Ghana, 80 students will benefit from this educational program. The course is going to offer students the opportunity to learn functional programming and help them to understand how to build smart contract applications. So great to see this. I'm not gonna read this article, pretty much just gonna go over some of the main highlights and key details, uh, but essentially, Things like this are gonna be very important for driving the innovation of blockchain technology because you actually give the people who are there living it the tools to create the solutions. So Ghana is currently driving the digitization of some of its key economic areas. The Bank of Ghana, for example, is working towards the development of a blockchain-based digital currency. 
So it fits perfectly with that. Lars Brunez, the IOG Director of Education, has facilitated many other courses in other countries in Africa as well. Uh, the previous Haskell courses include places like Athens, Barbados, Ethiopia, and virtually in Mongolia. So he's been all over and he's doing a lot of great things there. He was the director of the Plutus Pioneers Program. I'm sure he's gonna be involved in the Atala Pioneers Program. So Lars Brunez doing incredible stuff in terms of education for Cardano and blockchain technology. So great to see this. Uh, Charles had also put in some remarks saying that at IO, we are committed to empowering citizens to autonomously develop solutions to day-to-day -day challenges in their own nations. So as part of his plan for Africa, it's nice to see that there is a big significance in the education uh, and the entire ethos of the Cardano project has been a lot of that. So great to see this development. Next up, a great article from Sunday Swap talking about their scooper model. So this was one of their proposed solutions to the concern of concurrency on Cardano. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the key highlights of this article, uh, pretty much talking about how they're going to launch their public testnet and then their mainnet launch. Uh, and what they're gonna be doing with this is they're actually going to be creating a solution by using stake pool operators. Um, so they actually had proposed a call to action for community stake pool operators to apply to become a scooper. Uh, but let's take a look at what it is to actually be a scooper. So it stems from the same insight that underpins proof of stake protocols by aligning incentives and creating systems of governance. You can scale a system by building trust in the protocol. So that kind of goes back to what we were talking about with the stake pools. They've chosen to use these stake pools as these scoopers because there's already that instilled level of trust. It would make sense because a delegator is going to delegate to a stake pool because they trust that the stake pool operator is going to be the one who's maintaining the proper operation of that stake pool. So I guess they've applied the same concept in the same game theory. Uh, it's really interesting to see how they've described it. So a scooper builds and submits a transaction which executes many swaps against the automated market maker and in return collects a small ADA fee. So we want to emphasize that the safety and security of your funds is always protected by the global consensus ledger rules and smart contracts. The scooper can never take the funds in your order, withdraw liquidity from the pool, or execute an order other than the one you specified. Like a pure order book, market participants can place good until canceled orders onto the blockchain. These don't require interacting with any pre-existing entities and so don't suffer from the UTXO contention problems in other protocol designs. Using a programmable API, these orders can be tailored to the market participants' desires. However, unlike a pure order book, the liquidity pool can rely on the orderly and efficient execution of swaps enabled by the automated market maker. The first step is choosing trusted members of the Cardano community to run them. So with that, they've posted their application to be part of their ISO. We submitted an application so that Kaizen Crypto could be a part of the Sunday Swap ISO. I think it'd be great for our stake pool brand to be here and help represent the Sunday Swap team. We were able to meet some of the team members at Wyoming during the Cardano Summit. I shook Pai's hand. It would be great to have him on our podcast as well as they make progress. I know it's got to be a really busy time for them, uh, but this was a great article and we went ahead and applied, so I'd really appreciate any support from the community as well. We're really aiming to help bring as much value to the community as possible. So great article from Sunday Swap. This was really informative. Uh, if you haven't already checked it out, I will be sure to leave all the links for you all down in the description below. So if you do wanna check this out, give it a look over. You can check out those links down in the description below. Next up, we saw an update from IOG about the Plutus application backend. So what is the Plutus application backend? I've got a post here from Reddit that gives us a pretty good overview. The Plutus application backend enables developers to interact with smart contracts. It's an off-chain backend service for managing and handling the requirements of the application instance throughout its lifecycle. This service includes interaction with external clients such as wallet frontends and acts as an intermediary between Plutus applications, the node, the wallet backend, and end users. So this is something that we've been waiting on for a lot of these dApps to deploy on Cardano. I think that there was this 
conception or this idea or notion that as soon as the rollout of Alonzo would take place, we'd see an explosion of all these dApps on the Cardano mainnet. Uh, it's not necessarily the case because of things like this, but it's great to see these updates from IOG saying that today they've released the beta version of their integrated PAB and have now invited the developer community to try it out on the Cardano testnet. So they are making great progress. This is a significant milestone in the DeFi journey on Cardano, simplifying on-chain smart contract integration and smoothing the route to dApp deployment. Thanks to the dozens of projects that are building on Cardano, we continue to work closely with our developer community on Discord, and next week we'll ramp things up with a program of readiness meetings with some of the projects closest to final audit and deployment. So great to see this. They've got a list on their essential Cardano GitHub of some of the projects that are going to be building and utilizing this Plutus application backend. Good luck to everyone as we start to accelerate towards dApps, DEXs, and DeFi deployment on Cardano. So lots of updates happen. It's really exciting to see everything that's being built right now on Cardano. I think that what's happening in places like Africa, we've got these deals being signed in places like Ethiopia, Zanzibar, you know, just places all over the world. And then we've got the builders right now who are working hard tirelessly to put this infrastructure in place. Um, it's a very exciting time to be a part of the Cardano community. So thank you all so much for watching. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video and you found some information valuable from it. If you did, please be sure to drop a like for me before you head out today. Don't forget to also leave me a comment down below. Let me know what are you most excited about that is currently being built on Cardano. I would love to hear from you all. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much again for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.